only one place to start, Dave and Rieth, and it's got to be at Stamford Bridge. I mean, I have to say, I remember updating on the 3-3 goal and saying it's not over yet. And listen, I, I, don't, I know nothing about this kind of thing. And then seeing the Cole Palmer 4-3 goal, my goodness. I mean, Rieth, have you ever seen a, a finish like this? Your goal's in 90 plus 8 and 90 plus 10. Yeah, it's kind of um, in one game, I've pretty much reversed my entire view about these sort of long periods of stoppage time. That was um, that was absolutely wild, actually. Um, you know, never mind, never mind the scoreline and, and sort of when the goals actually came. Just the just the nature of the match. It's almost um, it's almost uh, it's almost an indictment of sensible clubs and good coaching isn't it i think sort of you just have you just have that kind of anarchy and it's, it's that cliche isn't it about a good advert for the premier league but you watch something like that and you just want to see you just want to see more of it it's yeah fabulous match it, it it really was um yeah cold as ice uh, the headline here on the, the live blog on the Suns uh, digital platforms. And, and, and Dave, given, you know, the, the, you, work for, you work for the Sun and, you, you know, you look at this kind of like headline, you, you look at Cole Palmer and the impact that he has made at Chelsea. I mean, it's an outsized impact, isn't it? Given all the chaos of what's going on at Stamford Bridge. Yeah, I mean, the vast majority of these Chelsea signings have been somewhere between disastrous and bang average. Palmer's been outstanding from the word go. And... You watch City trying to break down Arsenal, with, you know, with, with with no success whatsoever on Sunday, and and do realise that Guardiola's made a rare mistake by letting Palmer go. He didn't want Palmer to go, but Palmer, um, I'm told, when they brought Jeremy Doku in towards the end of August, that was the point where Palmer thought another forward player coming in, maybe not exactly the same position. My minutes are really not going. I'm not going to be getting enough minutes here, and that was the point when he decided. It's press for a move, which ended up being to Chelsea. And um, I think, you know, the way Doku's played, he's pacey, he's got some tricks, but very little end product. Palmer is all about the end product. I mean, I haven't, I haven't double checked because he's got three tonight, but his goals and assist tally is extraordinary. Um, he, he surely must be on the plane to Germany through England. And and the fact, yeah, as you said, the fact he's doing this at a club which is totally dysfunctional, where most of the signings have been pretty poor. And Palmer has been has been outstanding. That yeah, that 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 makes you know, that adds to it. If he'd gone to a team that was doing well and and, done, and played as well as he has done, that would be something. But this is something else. Uh, and Riath, how much of a catalyst could this be for the rest of Chelsea season? Just get the table right now. They're tenth, but they have a game in hand on all of the teams above them and two on West Ham. I mean, they could end up seventh or sixth here if they manage to put some results together. Yeah, I think there's a couple of things there. It's sort of, they have actually sneaked their way into some quite good form. It's about it's about six unbeaten in the league now. But again, I look at a game like that tonight, and I'm, I'm almost reluctant to talk too much about the direction Chelsea are going in because that that was totally chaotic. And if you were to if you were to go through that game from a sort of very boring technical point of view you would just you'd have five sheets of a3 paper full of the mistakes that they made so it's it is hard to talk about sort of a corner turn on the basis of an incredibly dramatic result but they have there has been this there has been this upturn and kind of going with what sort of what what sort of Dave's just said there when you look at a player like Cole Palmer, for him to be able to do that in a team that has been struggling is absolutely remarkable. I do, I did, you know, I don't have this information off the top of my head, but I did write it down two seconds before we went on air. It's now sort of 19 goals across the competition, across all the competitions, and about 10 assists. That, that, those are astonishing numbers when you see how bad they've been. But you can't, when we talk about their current form, it's very hard to discount just how up and down they've been. I, I, I you know, we, we all we all kind of fall into this trap when we're writing about them that you go there and you sit through a good result or a half decent performance and you start talking about a corner being turned. And then about three or four days later, you're made to look slightly foolish. So I don't really want to sort of throw myself into that trap for about the seventh time this season. But you know, obviously it's a great night. This is this does feel like their sort of most sustained patch, but you only have to go back a, a few days to them twice giving up a lead against Burnley. So it's you do have to temper it.
Yeah, no, 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 I, I, I get that. I get that. Um, what about Manchester United, though, Dave? Because 3-2 up, haven't been 2 nil down. Uh, now nine points off fifth place, which could well be Champions League for next season. But Manchester United aren't going to be playing in that competition next season, are they? No, no. no. I mean, it looked possible um, that with a couple of minutes left, with 98 minutes played, it looked possible they could maybe try and squeeze in there. But, I mean, exactly what Riaf was saying about Chelsea is true of United. You know, you, you go to a game. I went to, I was at the United-Liverpool game, lucky enough to be there, the cup match a couple of weeks ago. One of the best games I've seen for years. One of the best atmospheres I've experienced at Old Trafford probably ever. And you sort of you, you came away from that thinking, yeah, maybe maybe this is a this is a corner turn. It really felt like it that night, and that was a really really meaningful game, far more than tonight's was, as great as tonight's game was. But you know they've they've come you know they've come away from from that result, and they, I know there was an international break in between, but then they've been really poor at Brentford on Saturday. Very lucky to get a draw there, even though they went ahead late on, but they were battered by Brentford, and then they've come you know come and lost to Chelsea tonight. So. I mean, I've seen United, I've been at United games this year where they have beaten Liverpool 4-3, where they have won 4-3 at Wolves in the 97th minute, where they've lost 4-3 in Copenhagen, having been two goals up, where they've drawn 3-3 at Galatasaray when they were two goals up. And it's just lunacy. You just do not know what to make of them. They're probably even more inconsistent than Chelsea, and that's saying something. Um, I might, we probably shouldn't be surprised that it was, it was a mad game because it's two mad clubs, two mad teams at the moment.